Good evening, everyone. As Mike said, I'm Mark, if you don't already know me. Um, welcome to the Museum, as Mike nicely introduced. Um, oh, yes, there we go. So, Mount Adia, the old Mount Adia is praying mantis, mantis, mantis. They're all the same animal, they're all the same group, but it, there's often a lot of confusion on names. Um, the name itself comes from the ancient Greek word mantis, meaning prophet, and eidos, meaning type or form. There are about 2,400 species have been described, and about 440, no, 460 genera. They live in tropical and temperate, but as with most things, there are a lot more in tropical regions, such as Trinidad, than there are compared to uh, the temperate regions, such as the the United States do have plain mantis, but actually a lot of those are introduced mantis for the pest control reason. Now, pest control is a little bit of an odd one. They're brought in for pest control, such as ladybirds and other bio pests. Their bio controls are brought in. But there is a bit of doubt whether they're actually doing any good, because they're not selective animals that will actually come in and feed on everything. So they're taking away your pests, but they are taking away your beneficial insects as well. Mantis have a lot of cultural references. They've been in ancient um, ancient Chinese culture and lots of other things. Uh, this is the same. Oh, why did I put this slide first? This is my slide that has all the information for the pictures. <laughs> uh, I thought I'd put a couple of interesting things. If people like facts, they have a strike speed of 50, uh, 30 to 50 thousandths of a second. And I've got some video to show you that. They have incredible eyesight. They can see 60 foot away. So it's about 20 meters. So considering that a praying mantis is at best this big, that is a very incredible sight. They also have five eyes. They have two very good um, eyes on the top and three very small simple eyes. But they only have one ear in certain species. And this is actually an interesting modification of their abdomen and it actually allows them to avoid bats. This allows them to set echolocation, and they will actually drop out the way of the bat. Um, they're also the only insect that's able to turn its head 180 degrees. They're a relatively new group, um, originally coming from the proto-cockroaches, somewhere about 145 million years ago, and about 35 million years ago is when we start getting, um, we start getting uh, modern looking praying mantis. So, Ordo Dictyoptera, I just put, it's the, it's the sister group of uh, Blatidia, which is cockroaches, including the termites now, and also mantis are, have been confirmed to be monophyletic. Oh, I have got the So, just in case you see things, this is a mantis fly. Chris brought me one of these, and it took me about four days to figure out what it was. This is not a mantis. This is an assassin bug. It does have long grasping arms like a plain mantis. This is also not a mantis. This is a mantis. <laughs> <laughs> now, I wasn't going to put this in until Amy pointed out that there was a certain member that actually thought that my talk was on manatees, and decided not to come because of that. And then we found out it was on mantis, wished he was coming. So this is not a, man no, not a mantis, this is a manatee. <laughs> this is a mantis. Now here, you can see your praying mantis. This is Thespis media, one of the, the grass mantis. Now, you see the long extending arms here. They've also got a very long pronotum, which is something very interesting about their morphology. This one's caught a bee. This was um, found in Arena Forest in 2012 when I was out with the expedition. Uh, um, Camouflage. So, praying mantis, as you can see on that one, if that was standing on a blade of grass, it's very hard to see. They have very good cryptic camouflage in lots of species, and they will use this to avoid predators and also to prey. They are a consummate um, opportunistic ambush predator, so they will, in most species, stay waiting for a moth or a fly to walk past. Now, can anyone see the praying mantis? <laughs> Try looking for these things, especially as it starts to get dark. There he is. This is Liticus and Trinidadensis, it's a very recently reviewed species that has actually now become a Trinidadian endemic. This you will find 
very often on a tree, but they're very, very fast. They're one of the um, only uh, species that actually are the only genera that will actually actively hunt prey. So they're feeding. They don't just feed on insects. They will feed on lizards and even birds. Graham White has a picture from his garden where um, one has actually caught a copper rod hummingbird. This, I, I didn't actually have the picture, but I can just please work. Here we go. This is, this is maybe this. Chris gave me that. So you can see the brain man just, as soon as it sees something, head round, instantly look at <laughs> so, you saw the very long extending raptorial forearms. So, this allows them to catch prey very effectively with their backwards pointing um, spines on this. Now, that was incredibly fast, as I said. So, here we've got this. This is slowed down to 400 frames per second. Now, when the mantis catches, they will go straight for the throat, throat for throat on the spine, to instantly paralyze their prey. This is very effective on their wasps, because the wasp can sting them and cause a, a, a great amount of damage. Right. There has been some very interesting studies on the, um, the sight of mantis. They are very, very, very good at um, anticipating movement, so they can very, very quickly within their brain calculate a sudden change in movement and they only will go for an animal that is the exact same right speed and the exact right size. This has been tried out with brain mantis stuck to boards. So it's an interesting method. So here I've got a label diagram that I created with the morphology. So like all insects, they've got their, their head, their thorax and their abdomen here. As I said, the extended pronotum here, this is something very unique to these, to these animals. This allows a lot more movement and a lot more reach. Um, and, sorry, anterior bacterial claw here with several sets of spines on it. They also have a femoral brush that I couldn't get on there that they were used for cleaning. If you ever see a plain man just doing this, much like a cat, they're actually be cleaning their antenna and their, and their face. Should put some water. So the wings of praying mantis, they are not all winged. There are four basic groups you can put them into. There's the Macropteris, which are the long-winged praying mantis, which we do have some species in Trinidad. We've got the Brachopteris, which are the short-winged. We've also got some species here that I've got some pictures of. There's the Micropteris, which have very small vestigial wings, and the Apteris. Now, one of the interesting things about the praying mantis is that this isn't species-specific. This can actually, this is a, there's a lot of sexual dimorphism, dimorphism in praying mantis. Now, certain species like some of the Thespid species can actually have males with wings and females without, and occasionally male, uh, females with wings. Now, there, as I said, there's a lot of sexual dimorphism. This is actually all the same species. This is all Stagmanantis carolina, which is a very wide-reaching species that reaches from southern United States all the way down to Trinidad and into Venezuela and Brazil. So it does have two different forms. There's the green form here and the brown form, like the one that Chris has got me before, which you saw in the videos, and the male here. Now one of the, um, the ways it can, help, can often be used to tell males or females is often your males will have um, hairline wings and your females will have solid wings. Another way that you can tell is um, abdominal rings. The rings here, females will only have five, whereas your males will have anywhere up to eight. So there's also a great range in size in Trinidad. They're not this big, because that'd be quite scary. <laughs> um, they, this is a relative size. So this small one down here is another Trinidadian endemic called um, Bantiella, uh, Bantiella trinitatis, and it's about maybe 1.6 centimeters long, about 16 millimeters, and the largest uh, 
Sorry, my math is just not getting around these words today. Mm -hmm. Stagmatotera septentrionalis, there we go, it's too many X's. Now, you may sometimes see these up the north coast. First time I saw one of these was up at uh, Petitacari. They will be attracted to light. As Chris will probably know, they, some will be attracted to light, but some you can beat net for, or you'll often actually have to search around grass or on trees for. So there's a nice variation in Trinidad of morphological differences, size differences, and just general look. So the life cycle of a praying mantis, whilst the female, the male and the female mate, which there is the misconception that every time a male mantis, a female mantis mates with a male, she will eat it. It is a common occurrence, but in a lot of species this will not happen. It's only been confirmed in so many species. There are a lot of species that it doesn't happen in. The reason for it is thought to be due to the very high protein level in a praying mantis itself, so it is a, a sacrificial offering. So what they lay is they lay this sort of foamy business up the rear end here, and this is called a Uthika. Now the Uthika will set and will contain, it can contain anything from six, no, eight to four thousand eggs, depending on the species. And the size will range sort of dependent on the animal, on the unmounted. Then you get your little nymphs. Very, very cute. I've had a few Uthikas hatch. When they're only a millimetre long, you try and they lose them on the floor. <laughs> Not a good idea. And then you get up to your adult again. So they'll go through anywhere from five to eight inch size, depending on the species. And then back round again. So in Trinidad, there are five families, 11 subfamilies, nine genus, and nine, 19 species. Every species we have here is in a different genus. Um, through my work, I went through the collections, I collected the collections of the university, came up with 225 specimens, and didn't really know where to start. I'd never worked on praying mantis before, and it was a little bit scary. So I used or already identified specimens and also did a lot, a lot, a lot of literature reading and contacting people in random places. And after this I actually found that they during my work I've come across three new species to Trinidad. They're not new species to the world, to my best knowledge, but they are three new species and that three of our species are endemics. So Originally, there, till 2002, there was um, eight families of praying mantis. There was then a very large sup, uh, super generic change, which went from eight families to 16 families, and changed a lot of this around. So a lot of my work was trying to work through changes in this, and generally just figuring out what we actually have here. The last, is that, no, 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 no. Right, so this is one of our praying mantis. This is the member, the only member of the Mant Mantoidae that we have in Trinidad. That's called Mantoida Fol Folgudi penis. There we go. Now, these are often called fly mantis. They look very, very similar to small flies. They're only about two centimeters long. We also have a lot of thespids, which are the, the thespidae. Bantiella trinitata, like I showed before, and here we've got Musonia surinama. I should make those little pictures a little bit clearer. Things that we'll have to see. Uh, thespids are mainly your grass and your, your stick mantis. So often when you're out in the field, out in the bush, you'll come across your walking sticks. Now your stick mantis act very similar. They even do the swaying motion. If you walk up to a stick, man, a walking stick, they will move from side to side, pretend that they're um, a leaf or something. These guys will actually do the same thing. We've got the Acanthopidae. Now these are very nice mantids. There's very nice colours and adaptions. We've got the top one up here is the Echinista multicolour. Very nice um, small prey mantis. Both of these are around about two centimetres long. Tithro rosy penis here. Interesting because it has one green wing and four red wings. Now this was actually worked on by an ex uh, by two papers that came out of uh, Glasgow University. 
and it was to do with the symmetry of this wing. This doesn't actually correspond every time on the left or the right, and some work was done on that. We've also got the Acanthops parafalsata, which is the dead leaf mantis. Oh, I forgot I do it actually. <laughs> so we've got one here that they was very thankfully brought in. Now, these guys are the most hard to see of all the brain matches here. They resemble a dead leaf incredibly well. Come across them, you've probably looked over dozens. I've probably looked over dozens. They're very effective, but they also do show a level of sexual dimorphism. This is a male here with the um, abdomen pointing up, and the female over here. Now, the Mantididae are the largest family within all praying mantis, and we have a good number here. They're the sort of more regular looking praying mantis that you're used to see, the, the big green mantis that everyone, if they think of a praying mantis, thinks of. So we've got our large um, stigmata terra septentria analysis at the top here. We've also got a uh, parastigmata unipunctata, a smaller one. We did actually find this on Quibos. We've also got things like the Urxiophus rubicunda. Now, this is identified by um, protrusions on the eyes. It has triangular looking eyes at the tip. And we also have Fink's lobata here with its uh, ocular projection here and its <coughs> lobes on its legs. We also have Phylogex tripunctata, Parafrontina reticulata, and Brunaria subopterra. These are the new species that I um, found within the collections at UE. So these are the new species to Trinidad. We've got the nice Lutigasidae. This is one of the newly described um, endemic species. Now, the collections at UE were made up of the ICTA collection, the CABI collection, and the CAC collection. The ICTA collection was the largest collection that we had, but due to the um, bringing in of these other two collections, it brought our collection up to a, a very usable number. So, previous work that has been done in Trinidad, there were three species less done previously in the past, one by Lawrence Brunner, one by Bibi and Shu Schrader and Justin Crane, and also one done by Kevin, who I found out was a Scottish entomologist that I hadn't realised before. So the Scots blank coming. Now, work recently that's been done has been done by uh, a member of the club here, uh, Pencil, that his reproductive behaviour on Acacomis the Multicolumn was published in the living world. Justin Crane, at the same time as the Billy BB paper, conducted one on defensive behaviours, which has been cited throughout the world and was all done up at the similar research station. Um, and down the bottom here are two works done by the Glasgow University through expeditions and work here. Now, for future work, the main one we need to do is we need to get a species list of Tobago. So Tobago has, I only know of three specimens being collected in Tobago. If anybody has any flight matches they have got from Tobago, or finds any in Tobago, and you can collect them, that would be fantastic. The, it's one of the only sort of it's for Trinidad to be done in Tobago or not, it would be very interesting to get some specimens there. There are also a species comparison to Bocas Islands. There, I spoke to a colleague in uh, Peru who is world renowned in Praying Mantis, and we think that we may be able to do comparative phylo phylogeography of geogra geography to actually test how long ago all the Bocas Islands separated and also how long ago Tobago is our mainland, Venezuela. So we thought this would be very interesting. so much easier because they're very, very hard to find. And if anybody does collect any, if you can deposit them in the museum, then someone will be able to identify them. I have created a key to the 
uh, magic stand here. So thank you very much for listening. <laughs> <laughs>